This week, I take a flight to an airport in the middle of nowhere. An airport with only a temporary porter cabin as a terminal building, but an airport that has 18 flights a day all to one place, as I take a flight to the middle of the Pilbara in Western Australia. Well, welcome to the beautiful city of Perth in Western Australia. So the place I'm heading to today then, well, it's the sort of place where when you tell an Aussie that you go in there, the first words out of their mouth are, well, what the bloody hell do you want to go there for? And then when you tell them that you just want to go and see what's there, the next words out of their mouth are usually, fuck all, mate, that's what's there. I've had this conversation numerous times with Australian people since I've been here in Oz. It, it always seems to go the same way. But of course, I am Noel Phillips, and I'm not going to let the fact that there's nothing there put me off going somewhere. So I've got to get across to the airport because I've got a plane to catch. Wonderful, thank you very much. Just grab my bag out of the back. Thank you, have a great day. You know, the last time I was here at this Qantas terminal was when I did New Zealand and back in 71 hours. That actually was the video that took this channel to where it is now. And crazy to be back here again. There's no rainbow lorikeets making a noise today. But anyway, I'm off today to a place called Paraburdu. Paraburdu? Paraburdu do do. Shake an apple, paint a tree. I don't know, however it goes. Anyway, that's where we're off to today. A place called Paraburdu, which is quite away from here, it's in the middle of nowhere, but for some reason it has up to 18 flights every single day and I'm going to go and find out what's there. Alright, and through security, nice and straightforward, they've got those cool machines where you don't have to take everything out of your bag, so that's pretty cool. Let's get to the gate. Oh, that part's too loud. I think he's just gone around that 330 I wasn't actually, I wasn't actually planning to film that, but he, yeah, he's, he's gone around. Wow. Um, anyway, I'm in the Qantas lounge here at uh, Perth Domestic Airport. The, the food selection here in these Qantas lounges is just a bit crap, really. Unless you want a cheese sandwich, there's pretty much nothing. I mean, I've just gone for the cheese, the ham, and a little bit of salad on the side. There's no like hot food, chili, anything like that like you get in a lot of places. It's very, very basic. But anyway, I'm, I'm moaning and whinging like a, one of those lounge reviewers that moan about lounges and um, that, that's, that's, that's not <laughs> who I am. So I'm not going to do too much moaning about the lounges today. But um, it's certainly better than what we're going to get when we get to the other end of this journey. That is for sure, because that is going to be way out in the middle of nowhere. But for now, I'm going to be enjoying this bit of food, the last bit of fancy looking foodish by Qantas standards and um, yeah, get on our flight up to Parabadu do do. Right, so it's time to head down to the plane to get our flight across to the middle of nowhere. It's quite excited about this actually. Right, so there is my ride across to Parabadu. It's a Fokker 100, quite an old one as well, I think. But not many of them left flying, so it's really good to be able to get a ride on one. So we're off today on that thing for a two hour flight, I think. Let's go find a seat and we're going to get on board the plane. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to Flight 16 Now boarding through gate 17A. Please have your boarding pass through the black hole or mobile device ready for scanning the gate. Thank you and enjoy your flight. Thank you. Thank you. The walk out to the aircraft at Perth on these remote stands can be a really long way but at least they've put this tunnel in so you don't get burnt to a crisp by the Australian sun. Hi, uh, I thought we were walking there for a minute. <laughs> My ride up to Parabadu today was this Fokker 100. It was delivered in 1994 to American Airlines. It flew with them until 2004 when Austrian took her over and then in 2016 she emigrated down under, flying for Alliance Airlines and eventually Network Aviation on behalf of Qantas Link. Hi there, how are you? I'm good, thank you. That's what you're going. Thank, Thank you. you. On board she's in a 3-2 all economy configuration and I was sitting towards the back right in front of the engines. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. Sorry to pray this will go in the overhead bit. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they're welcome on board the Qantas Link Fokker 100, one of my favourite planes that you can still fly on 
that you're not going to be able to fly on for very long. Um, and this is probably the best seat in the house. These are the next few rows forward because there is my view at the side of this beautiful Rolls-Royce engine. It's about a two hour flight, I think, up to Parabadu, the Fokker 100. It's a long old flight to the middle of nowhere. So yeah, looking forward to it. The legroom is actually pretty decent. I've got my bag under that seat. But look at this legroom. That ain't bad, is it, for a little plane like this? Seats are in pretty good nick as well for a plane that's as old as this one. So, yeah, looking forward to getting, getting airborne out of Perth and listening to this amazing engine at the side of me. My ride up to Parabadu today then took us north out of Perth, heading straight to the Parabadu airport. Flight time today was 1 hour and 27 minutes, cruising at 33,000 feet. Carrying that airborne from Perth on the Fokker 100, that noise is just absolutely incredible. The Rolls-Royce engines are fighting away at the side of me, screaming away there. As we climb off the coast actually, considering we're going to the middle of the desert, we're actually climbing off the coast and we're going to follow the coast up north a little bit I think before we head inland and across to Parabadu. About a two hour run today, quite a long way up there and the flight is absolutely well and truly packed, loads of people going up to work there in the region so that's pretty cool and um, yeah looking forward to a nice ride actually on the Fokker 100. Not long after takeoff, the crew came round with a snack service, which ended up being cheese and crackers today. Ended up being quite nice, actually. You see, while Parabadu might be out there in the middle of absolutely nowhere, with no sign of civilization anywhere nearby, what there is there is all underground, because it's in a region called the Pilbara, which is one of the biggest mining areas of Australia. Almost every single person on this flight is heading off there to work at the mine. It's a Sunday night at the minute. Everyone's heading off to do their week's work over in the Pilbara, either in Parabadu, Tom Price, or one of the many other mines nearby. And it's not just people who work down the mine either. One of the mine's chaplains that's out behind me. There's healthcare workers going to work in the hospitals there. There's people doing admin jobs and all sorts of other stuff. All working there on what's called a fly-in, fly-out basis which is abbreviated to FIFO. It's pretty much what it says on the tin. They basically fly in there, do a week's or two's work and then fly back down to Perth to be with their families at the end of it. And it's thanks to airports like Parabadu and these flights with Qantas that they're able to do that. So then started our descent down into Parabadu. This is a place that I have wanted to visit for a very long time only because it's got the really cool place name of Parabadu. I remember seeing it for the first time. I think it was actually one of in my Australia, New Zealand and back in 71 hours video. I saw a flight going to Parabirdu. 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 What a random place. Okay. And I thought, I've got to go there at some point just because it's a cool place. And, and we're there now. We're literally about to land there. So yeah. There's not a lot out the window, I have to say. This isn't like landing into LaGuardia or London Heathrow. There's, there's not a lot to see out the window. If nothing else, the approach into Parabadu is pretty spectacular. You approach over the Pilbara Mountains, weaving your way down to the huge runway at Parabadu Airport. Which we think 
the airport here is pretty much what you'd expect for a remote mining town here in Western Australia. There really isn't a lot here for an airport that gets 18 flights a day, especially on the last flight of a Sunday evening as the mine workers all arrive in for the week. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank Have a good you. day. Thanks. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Once you get off the plane, you just walk through a gate onto the parking lot where the buses were waiting to take all the staff off to the mines. For me though, I had something altogether more exciting planned. All right then, welcome to Parabadu Airport here in the middle of the Pilbara in Western Australia. It is bloody hot here, it's 46 Celsius at the minute in the middle of the afternoon, which is about 115 Fahrenheit. It's a bit warm. I'm gonna go and pick up my car, my rental car. They do have rental cars here. So I'm going to go and pick one up because my, where I'm staying is quite away from the airport. Let's go and um, get my rental car and get across to my hotel. You see, when you come to rent a car somewhere like Parabadu and the Pilbara, you don't just get a Toyota Yaris or a Chevy Spark or something like that. You get one of these bad boys. He's, he's got like flashing lights and everything. <laughs> what on earth? As I climbed into the truck, the dashboard confirmed this was the hottest temperature I'd ever set foot in. So this is when you realise just how remote it is out here in the middle of the Pilbara. There is literally nothing around. That's my view out of the side. You have got that, that thing going away. <laughs> Blasted away because you have to have a... Wish it shut up. You have to have a um, CB radio in the car fitted because for emergency reasons, really, because out here, if you break down, there's no phone signal or anything like that. You're literally stuck. So you have every vehicle fitted with one of these things, a little CB radio. So if anything happens, then you tell them where you are on there or you listen out for other people and go and help them if they end up getting into a bit of bother out here. This is really unforgiving terrain out here. <laughs> And I've got to get to my hotel about a 60 mile drive because that's the nearest hotel to Parapadu Airport. It's 60 miles away. It's going to be a long drive, but a pretty flipping cool though, you can't deny. All right, so I have literally just had a dingo walk across the road in front of me and he looked at me when I went past. It's the most Aussie thing ever, I think, in the middle of the outback in a pickup truck with flashing lights on it and a dingo walks across in front of you. This is amazing. <laughs> After driving for over an hour and seeing nothing but a single dingo, I came across the reason for the airport in Parabadu, one of Australia's largest mines. Now, you see, although I'm driving a mine truck and it's a pickup truck with flashing lights and everything on it and a CB radio, apparently that alone doesn't grant you access into the mining places. Here, apparently there's some sort of security risk or something. But luckily, I've got my eye in the sky. And with the eye in the sky, I was not disappointed. So this is the Rio Tinto mine here at Tom Price. It's not too far from Parabadu. It's home to thousands though of mine workers and they pretty much all work on a fly-in, fly-out basis. That means they come here, they fly in, in a Fokker 100 or with Qantas or something like that. I'm getting attacked by flies. They fly in and then work a few days, really hard, long shifts every single day. And then when they finish the work week, well, they fly back to Perth and that's how it all works. This site is absolutely massive, by the way. This is the closest I can come to it legally because it's a private road beyond here. It's still miles away from actually anywhere near the actual mine itself, but you can see where it is and the sort of operation and the scale of the operation that they've got going on here. I'm gonna bring this drone back before I get into trouble and then I've got to get away and across to where I'm staying for the night before it gets too dark and it, you get into risks of like running into kangaroos and stuff and before I get eaten alive by flies. Safely returned. All right, I've made it to my dicks for the night. This is one of the sorts of places that the FIFO workers come and stay in when they come up here. You can see I'm surrounded by pickup trucks with flashing lights on them. And this is, um, well, this is where I am. There's um, like these little cabin things here. And this is me for the night. So let's have a look what it's like inside. It's about a five minutes drive from the mine here in Tom Price. And here we go. Wow. So this is um, the accommodation here. 
And this is basically what the mine workers sleep in. It doesn't need to be fancy because they're working at 12 hour shifts. They come in on a Sunday or a Monday, they work a 12 hour shift for five, six days plus. And then they sort of finish a 12 hour shift and they come and just chill out and then sleep. And then the following morning they're up at 5 a.m. for another shift. The nurse that was sitting behind me who works on one of the mines hospitals was telling me that she starts work every morning at 5.30 and she does a 14 hour shift all in all through to the evening and then comes back, sleeps and then goes back to work. And then they do that and then when they've done, that's it. They go home and back to Perth at the end of the week. There's a loo review, let's have a look. Very simple bathroom there situation. Um, but yeah, this is it. So I'm going to be a FIFO worker, FIFO fun for tonight and sleep in my <laughs> in my little cabin here near to the Tom Price mine. And um, yeah, isn't it cool out here though? It's just incredible. You know, the, the thing about these FIFO workers who come here, it's a really good thing for the mining companies because they don't have to set up any permanent camps or anything for people to stay and they don't have to relocate people from Perth up here to these tiny little places in the middle of nowhere and as soon as the site's finished working because at some point this mine's going to run out of what it mines and um, they can just shut the mine down send everybody home without having to worry about relocating them again it works quite well for them the workers themselves as well though they work bloody hard they get paid quite well i am told for coming and working on a fifo basis i was offered a job once actually doing this, um, doing FIFO for an IT job, believe it or not, and I didn't take it because I didn't really want to be living in Perth and then flying in and out to these little towns every week or two. It wasn't really something that was good for me because the thing is, these people are away from home, like, so much, and there are studies and things that show the mental health impact it has on these workers and their families because they're away from them for weeks on end. And yeah, they get to spend the time with them, but then they're sort of here and not, here and not. A bit like military families, I guess, to a degree. The other thing that it's not good for, though, is the local communities because as much as it's great having thousands of people coming in and going and coming and going, it's not anything permanent. They don't get any sort of permanent developments built. They don't get permanent facilities built with it because these mine workers here, they don't need any of that. They work and sleep and work and sleep and that's pretty much it. So they don't get any of the investment into the actual local community itself per se, apart from what people are spending when they're here, which isn't a lot because it's all done by the mine companies themselves, again, to try and save money and get as much as they can out of it. So. It's not necessarily a brilliant solution, but it's a solution, I guess. And, well, I don't know, this is the life of people who work in the mines and it seems to work all right for them. The next morning, it was time to head back to the airport. Well, good morning from Tom Price, Western Australia. It's now seven o'clock in the morning. I'm the last person here, pretty much. All of my neighbours have gone to work, the guy next door, said he was starting this morning at four o'clock. So literally, he gets to seven and the place is deserted because everyone's off working. All the workers have gone off to the mine to go and crack on with their 12 hour long shifts. And it's just me and me ute. And um, I've got a flight now in a little while back down to Perth. So I'm gonna get the truck loaded up and then we're gonna get back on the road south back to Parabadu to get on the flight back to Perth. <laughs> As I headed back to Parabadu, I saw something that caught my eye. So I just pulled over on the way down to Parabadu from Tom Price and you've got this massive dump truck here parked at the side of the road that you can come and have a walk around. This thing's amazing. Look at the size of this, it's incredible. Those wheels are like twice the height of me alone. The um, guy that was in the next room to me last night in the next cabin, I was stood chatting to him last night and he's actually a convoy driver out here. He does drive in, drive out instead of fly in, fly out. He drives up from Perth, a two day drive, and then he is effectively the lead vehicle on the roads when they drive these things through town on the back of lorries. They take them down to Perth for maintenance apparently, and he moves them all over the place. They get them on ships in from Port Hedland and places like that. It's a two day drive for him to come up here. He does nine days driving around up here and then a two day drive back to Perth where he spends a day or two with his family and then he drives back up again another two days up here. What a lie. I mean, I said to that guy, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> All those hours on the road, he does 12,000 kilometers a month, he said. 
driving around this part of the world. That is just incredible, isn't it? And these things, he was showing me the pictures, these things are incredible. They go on the back of these massive wagons and he drives them all around, you know, is, is the lead vehicle effectively of the convoy, driving them all around Western Australia when they go off for maintenance or when they come in being moved between the mines or new ones off ships, things like that. Incredible, look, ah, look at that. Anyway, let's get back on the road. I've got a long drive down to the airport. Get back in. Um, let's get back in my nice vehicle of choice, <laughs> the mining Ute. The one thing I will say though is that the scenery in this part of the world is absolutely incredible. The drive, despite there being nothing there, is just an absolutely incredible one. All right, so I've dropped me mining Ute off back here at Parabadu Airport. The guy who works at Europe Car here is actually a viewer of the channel. I've got fans of the channel here in Parabadu, Western Australia. How crazy is that? Anyway, thank you for uh, taking the car back. Nice to meet you anyway. It's a tiny little airport. It's actually owned and operated by Rio Tinto, who are the mining company that operate pretty much all the mining here in Western Australia. The airport's actually owned by them. This is sort of it. It's a temporary-ish structure, like most things up here, because at the end of the day, once this place is finished with, once they've finished getting what they can out of the ground, well, that's it. They can move on to the next one, so they don't spend a lot of time building multi-billion dollar terminals here in places like Parabadu. So, um, yeah, there's a Qantas Fokker 100, one of the many flights off to Perth this morning. I'm on one a little bit later on this morning, so let's go inside and get checked in for the ride back to Perth. The departure lounge here could best be described as, well, a little bit rustic. Despite how basic it is though, the airport is one of the busiest in Western Australia. So to say how tiny this airport is, there's currently three Qantas Fokker 100s on the ground at the same time. They're just three of the 18 odd flights that are coming and going to Perth today. There's helicopters here, there's little turboprop planes coming in and out as well, chartered by the mining companies. This place is just one of the busiest airports I think in this part of the world, it's incredible. I headed inside the tiny terminal building to try and find out which of the 18 flights to Perth I'd be on board today. At peak times there can be a flight to Perth every 20 minutes. Hi there, how are you doing? Did you need a boarding pass? Are you happy to use um, your phone? No, well, can I take one please? Because I don't know if my phone's going to carry on working with no signal. So. <laughs> Thank you. About 9.30. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Hi there. There you go. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Once you get through to departures, there isn't really a lot to do here. Just a few rows of seats, which can get really busy when there's a few flights going out at the same time. Thankfully, I didn't have too long to wait until my flight was ready for boarding. <laughs> Thankfully the gate agent pointed out which of the three Fokker 100s was my ride down to Perth today so that I ended up getting on the right one. Today's ride was even older than the last one I was on, delivered in 1993 to American before going on to fly for Avianca in Colombia in 2006 and on to Australia in 2012. Hello there, how are you doing? I'm good thanks, how are you? The window seat, row 19, thank you. How are you? Hey mate, how are you? I'm good thanks, how are you? Very well, thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome on board the Fokker 100 back down to Perth. Just 19 of us on this flight today heading back down. This is one of the morning flights. So everyone's come up, she was just telling me that it was absolutely chocker on the way up and empty on the way back down because this is apparently what the morning flights are like. Everyone's coming in to start their days up here in the Pilbara. And um, yeah, these Fokker 100s, well, there's not many of them left. It's always great to get a ride on one. Out here, they are crucial to Qantas because they've got the high engines at the back of the plane. With them being so high off the ground, it means that they don't have to worry about sucking up dust and rocks and things as much as you would in something like an A320 or a 737 that they send to some places as well. So these fuckers are still, still, still going, and I think they're going to be going for maybe for some time, I guess. Although I'm guessing they're going to be on borrowed time at some point because they are very old now. So it'd be interesting to see what they end up replacing them with to these little airports out here. My 
right back down to Perth then. Took one hour and 34 minutes today, cruising at 32,000 feet. Right then, airborne from Parabadu, heading back south. I've actually moved to the other side of the plane because it is so empty, they said I could sit anywhere online. So the sun's obviously over that side, so it's a bit nicer over here. We get a better view out of the window over the Pilbara. Beautiful, beautiful part of the world, isn't it? Just incredible. It's time for the Noel Phillips Blue Review. And it's time for the Parabadu Blue Review. Parabadu Blue Review. Do, 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 do. And, and this is the Fokker 100 bathroom here at the back of the F100. There's two of them, one either side of the plane, and it's right next to the engine. You can literally feel the air engine at the side of you here. Crazy. Uh, we have going on here a little metal sink with a water tap. With running water, brilliant. Um, and then we've got paper towels, air sick bags, a push to flush just there. And a toilet just there as well. Um, not a bad loo, not a bad loo. Actually loving the flight with Qantas, always do actually. They're a lovely airline to fly with. They've got the quirks, but they are pretty nice and the crew are universally pretty decent as well on Qantas. It's been a good flight so far. I've loved getting up here to fly on the Fokker 100. I mean, just loving every minute riding on this piece of history. I never thought I'd say that about an F100, but this is a piece of history these days. That was the Noel Phillips Lou Review. <laughs> I got back to my seat to find out that the crew had left me roughly half the snack basket all at my seat. It was quite nice though, they've got some nice sweet snacks as well as a nice cup of coffee to go with it as well. You know, flying over this part of Australia, it's just absolutely incredible. And there might not be a lot there in terms of human activity or anything, but the scenery it's like something I've never seen before. It's like being on the surface of Mars or something. It's absolutely just amazing. And aside from that, you've got these wonderful little tiny communities dotted around the mines and the characters that come in and out doing those as well. So when people tell me, f**k all, mate, that's what's there, well, I would beg to differ and probably say that this is these are some of the most interesting places that I've ever been to. Now, don't get me wrong, to some people, what's out here might be just f all, mate. But for me, I think it's an incredible place. And that's the thing I love about coming to some of these off-the-beaten-track places. You see, they're off-the-beaten-track precisely because nobody wants to go there. But for me, the ability to experience the near isolation of these remote places, to see a million stars overhead at night, and for the air to be so silent you can hear your own heartbeat, well, that's something that only travelling can bring you. Alright then, top of descent, down into Perth, back to civilization <laughs> after being up there in the middle of nowhere. Looking forward to getting back down on the ground. My ride up to Parabadu and back cost me 484 US dollars or roughly 389 British pounds working out to the cost of 46 cents per mile. My cabin next to the mine cost me 193 dollars for a night and the ute was 110 dollars for 24 hours. As it turned out the crew were fans of the channel so I left them a Noel Phillips remove before flight keychain to say thanks for the great flight. Hello. 
Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for being with me for four flights. Yeah, yeah. Can I put that on my bag? If you want to move your back before you fly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you guys anyway, yeah. Absolute Thanks pleasure. a lot, guys. Thank you, so thank you. Much. bye bye. I would like to say thank you to all of my patrons who get access to my amazing WhatsApp community, monthly Zoom calls, and exclusive merch. Join them at the link on the screen now. Welcome back to Perth. After an amazing couple of days up there in Parabadu, Tom Price, Pilbara, whatever we're calling it, wherever about up there we were. Well, that was a fantastic little trip and really eye-opening as well to see what life's like up there. But like a FIFO worker, I am back now in Perth. And I'm going to be here now for a little bit because I've got my next flight to go and catch from the international terminal uh, to take me out of Australia. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought to it down below. If you're a FIFO, FIFO worker up in Australia somewhere, or if you have been in the past, if you've got any stories, love to hear them. Let me know down in the comments. And um, in the meantime, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be kind to one another, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.